Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is uh, kind of summarize with you uh, for the process for solving absolute value equations, as well as kind of go over some tips and tricks and some common mistakes that I see within my own students in my classroom. So basically, the process for solving an absolute value equation is to first of all, isolate the absolute value symbol. Make sure you get rid of any operations that, that's being applied um, to that symbol. Then, once we have the symbol, you know, our expression inside that symbol equal to another expression, um, then we go ahead and set up our two cases. Set up the cases where it's going to be positive, where it's going to for the absolute value is equal to the positive expression, as well as the absolute value is going to equal to the negative expression. So we got to negate the other side for our second case. Then we have two equations, because um, once we set up our two cases, we can remove the absolute value. And then we just go ahead and solve our two equations. Once we go ahead and solve our two equations, we need to plug back those solutions back into our equation to make sure that none of those solutions are going to be extraneous. Uh, so some common tips and tricks. Um, a lot of times I think students, they have a trouble with uh, solving the absolute value equation, or they just forget about it or don't do it. Hence my common mistake here. So a lot of times you don't know, replace it with a symbol. Even if you want to use x, you know, if you have an equation for absolute value of 3x minus 1, you know, plus 2 equals, I don't know, 17, whatever. Well, a lot of times they just have trouble with there's so many things going on that you can rewrite it with 4x plus 2 equals 17. Just remember that x equals the absolute value of 3x minus 1, and that once you have x solved, you're going to want to plug back in the absolute value of 3x minus 1. So it's not something necessary. A lot of students can get away without doing that. But I thought it was a good tip and trick that I've used in the past for students that had trouble isolating the absolute value. The next thing is, you know, really just basically when you're solving, circle the variable. That helps you identify your variable as well as identify what operations that are being applied to the variable. And a lot of times also you can, you know, rewrite the expression so you can see is an addition, is a subtraction. Um, you know, that a lot of time is helpful when you circle that variable and that tells you you're going to keep that variable right there and then apply the inverse operations of which, which processes are being applied to it. The common mistakes, um, I kind of hinted, you know, both with actually what tip and trip, tip and tricks, is you got to solve for that absolute value. You can't create your two cases. I've seen so many students have an equation like this, and then they have it equal 17, and then have it equal negative 17. You have to isolate the absolute value first, right? The absolute value of any number is, you know, for a negative or a positive, is always going to equal the same value. So you got to make sure you set your absolute value by itself before you equal that expression or the negation of that expression. And the next thing is a lot of students, they just, once they get their answer, hope it works good, um, check, your, check for extraneous solutions. You're going to have them. Um, and not all solutions are going to actually be solutions of the equation. You've got to plug them back in and make sure that they are a solution. So whenever you solve, you know, you get x equals 5, x equals 10. Take those values, plug them back into the original equation, and make sure that they are a solution. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is a summary for solving absolute value equations. Thanks.